Pastor Jeff, you bad motherfucker. Hey, you bad motherfucker. Hey, you bad motherfucker. Yeah, welcome back, podcast world. I'm your host, Rasta Jeff. This is episode 822 of the Grow From Your Heart podcast. I've got a great episode lined up for us. In this episode, I'm going to give away free seeds. That's right. Hang out. We'll talk more about those free seeds later in the episode. I do want to remind you once again that iRedirect.com is back online. Make sure you check out iRedirect.com for a restock and a fresh drop. That's right. By the time this episode comes out, there will be new products on iRedirect.com. I also want to remind you that we do offer gift certificates for iRedirect.com. If you want more details on a gift certificate, send me an email at growfromyourheartathotmail.com. Put the word gift certificate in the subject line. I'll get back to you and let you know how to get that gift certificate for iRedirect.com. I also want to invite you to the Dude Grows Growers Cup. That's right, the Dude Grows crew is throwing a party June 1st, just outside of Fort Collins, Colorado. Join us once again for the Dude Grows Growers Cup. Team Irie Genetics will be there. The Dude Grows crew will be there. And I look forward to seeing you at the Dude Grows Growers Cup. Make sure you check out dgccup.com for all the information. All right, I feel like we've covered all of the business part of today's podcast. Let's segue into something a little bit more fun. If you've been watching the last couple of episodes, I've definitely noticed it while I've been editing, and a few people have noticed it enough to send in a message and say, hey, Rasta Jeff, what has happened to the bridge of your nose? That's right. Uh, You may notice I've got a little dinger here on the bridge of my nose. It's been there for a couple of shows. Uh, Nothing exciting, nothing crazy happened to my nose. I was invited to a virtual star walk, a non-VR interactive experience, and I went to that experience, and they promised us through all the advertising, through the ticket purchase, that it was not VR. When we got there, the first thing they did was put the VR helmet on me and tell me it's not VR. They say it wasn't VR because it was a screen and I could see the rest of the room, but it was basically putting on VR. Anyway, I'm bitching about the wrong thing. Uh, The person that placed the VR helmet on my head was an average size person and I am six foot five and she reached up and tried to gently place this VR helmet on my head but when she let go of it it smacked me right square in the fucking nose made my eyes water a little bit gave me a little bit of a dinger so it wasn't anything real exciting that happened to my nose I went to a non-VR interactive star walk and when they put on the VR goggles or the VR helmet they busted me right in the bridge of the nose that's really what happened to my nose so Thank you to all of the people who said, hey, Rasta Jeff, what's going on with your face? Uh, I do appreciate your concern. My nose will be just fine. Uh, It did hurt for a little bit, but I am over it now. Thank you for your care and concern. Now that we've got my nose out of the way, let's move into a new section that we've been doing here on the podcast. This is a section that I call Grow Room pet peeves. A few weeks ago, I mentioned something that really bugged me in a grow room, and I've invited you, the listeners, the viewers, to rant and vent a little bit and let me know what drives you nuts in the grow room. What is your grower pet peeve? Is there something in your grow that drives you crazy? Is there something you see in another grow that drives you crazy? Perhaps you work in a commercial cultivation facility and something just pisses you off there every day and it's the same thing. I encourage you to send me a message. You can do it on YouTube. You can do it through an email. You can even use that Grow Help tab on iRegenetics.com. But send me your grow room pet peeves. Let me know what grinds your gears about cannabis cultivation. It could be about the cannabis community. Anything cannabis related that just frustrates you or, like I said, grinds your gears or is your grow room or grow culture pet peeve, let me know. If I do share your grow pet peeve here on the podcast, guess what? You will win a free coupon for a free pack of Irie Genetics Premium Seeds at iriedirect.com. Right here in front of me, I do have a grow room pet peeve. This one was sent in by my friend, newbie. Nugs. Big shout out to my dude, Newbie Nugs. My friend, Newbie Nugs, please send me your email address so I can send you a coupon code for a free pack of Irie Genetics Premium Seeds at iriedirect.com because I'm about to read your pet peeve here on the podcast. And that pet peeve goes just like this. It says, yes, my pet peeve is pictures of dirty grow room floors. Yes, if you're going to grow, clean up the floor. If you're going to take a picture, clean up the floor. If you're going to post that picture, clean up the floor, or at least edit out that dirty floor. What are you doing, bro? One of the main things to think about in growing is cleanliness. Cleanliness is how you prevent probably 70% of most of your major problems in the grow. So clean that shit up off the floor. My dude Newbie does have more, though. He says, 
uh, pots on the floor with no drain pans and runoff stains and buildup. Yes, that is so gross, bro. If you're going to put pots on the floor and water them, have something to catch that runoff. Unless you got a floor drain and you're doing a bunch and you got the commercial thing going, then that's a different story. Hose that down when you're done. But if you're growing in a home grow and you're pouring water into a pot, have something to catch that water after it goes through the pot, not just the floor. Then don't let those big nutrient, those big salt rings build up on the floor. That's just ugly. You can do that if you want, but I understand that that is a pet peeve. I'd recommend not doing that. Clean that up. Let's just be a little more, uh, have a little more pride for the grow room. My buddy does have more to say though. He says, add a little soil and leaf for garnish. I love that, bro. That is why I read your message because I like that tone. We're just going to read it all. It says, my pet peeve is uh, pictures of dirty floors, pots on the floor, no drain pans, runoff stains and buildup, and add a little soil and leaf for garnish. It sounds like you've just made a recipe for disaster there, my bro. Uh, those are all pet peeves. Yes, clean that shit up, especially if you're going to post a photo. Then it does go on. It says, just lighting up the neon sign for pests and pathogens and problems. Even worse is carpet in closet grows. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, carpet in a grow room does. I didn't even know, but that's like nails on a chalkboard just reading that carpet in the grow room. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. I understand some of you guys have to do what you got to do. You got to grow where you can grow. But carpet, oh, that's a, such a great place for so many bugs to hide. And then you're going to spill shit on that carpet and ruin it. And it's going to get moldy and funky. It's going to get gross. I'm feeling you. Newbie Nugs, my dude, please reach out because I owe you a free pack of Irie Genetics Premium Seeds. All right, podcast world, let's segue into the question and answer part of this podcast. I do have a website. That website is iriegenetics.com. On the top of that website, there is a list of tabs. One of those tabs does say grow help or grow questions. I forgot what it says. I didn't go there today and remember myself, but go to the website. If you have a grow question, go to the grow help tab. We'll ask you a couple of preliminary questions, then we give you space to type in your grow question. Send me a question. If I read your grow question here on the podcast, I will send you a coupon code for a free pack of seeds at iriedirect.com. I've got a great question here in front of me. This one came from my friend who wants to be called All Mixed Up. What's up, bro? It's good to hear from you. It's good to answer your question on the podcast. I did not look at the name before I pulled this uh, question out of the pile. I simply read the question and thought this is something I could answer. Now I do see the name on there. My friend, I will be sending you a coupon code for a free pack of Irie Genetics Premium Seeds. The grow question goes just like this. It says, yo, Rasta Jeff. What's up, All Mixed Up? Good to see you, bro. It says, I was wondering if potency would go up if I let my cultivars go longer? That's a very good question. It says, I pulled Lemon Jeffrey at day 65 and had my flower tested. It tested at 20.1% THC and 2% CBG. So that is a sign that it could have gone longer, that CBG uh, may have converted into more THC. If you let that go longer, you may be onto something. It goes on though. It says, I was wondering if potency would go up with more days in flower or is it that if I'm in organic soil and not using PGRs to push the cultivars to their full potential? Thanks as always, Rasta Jeff, from your friend, All Mixed Up. So this is a great question. Now, a couple of things come to mind to answer this question. But the first thing I want to talk about is the trichome ripeness. The main thing that matters is the ripeness of the trichomes of these plants. Did you use magnification to see uh, how many amber trichomes you had on this plant before harvest? My next question would be, what percentage of those trichomes were amber? Did you have 10%, 20%, 30% amber trichomes? How many of those trichomes were amber at harvest time? Then we could experiment from there. We could cut some down earlier. We could cut some at the same time, cut some a little bit later, dry and cure them exactly the same, then have them lab tested again. It may be cultivar specific. It may be, uh, it may be phenotype specific, but it all depends on the ripeness of that plant. So going longer, it may have been more potent in different cannabinoids. The THC in there may have converted to something different. The CBG also may have had the opportunity, the potential to, uh, convert into THC. There are many things that can happen in just a few more days of growing that plant. So it's all about those trichomes. Were the trichomes ripe at harvest time? Were they at their peak ripeness? Could they have gone a little bit longer? Were they a little bit early? That's what's going to make the main difference. The second thing I would think about is the dry and cure process. All of your photography on social media is impressive. So I know you're a skilled grower. I know you're a qualified photographer, but after the grow, I don't know what happens after you take those photos. 
I don't know if you're able to dry and cure properly, and I'm not doubting you. I'm just saying that also could be a factor in increasing potency of those plants. So keep in mind that the dry and cure process can uh, dramatically increase or decrease the potency of the overall finished product. Uh, if you dry it too quickly, it may lose a lot of the potency. It may lose a lot of the terps. If you dry it nice and slowly, you should retain most of the terps and most of the potency, but many variables can mess that up very quickly. So the two things to think about are harvesting at peak ripeness. And the only way to really master that is by cutting down at different times, really, and then testing. But are you really concerned what the lab report says? I'm more curious, what does it do when you smoke it? Did you cut it down at the right time according to your buzz, to your desires? Uh, if you want more of a racy buzz, cut it down a little bit earlier. If you want that middle buzz, cut it down when you got about 20% amber trichomes. If you want more of a sedative, couch lock, relaxed sort of a buzz, then wait till you got 30% amber trichomes. That's where you need to dial in your desires. So what I would do is I would grow three or four plants and then I would cut one down at, where did you cut yours down? 65. So I would cut one down at day 60, then one at day 65 and one at day 70. And then I would dry and cure them all the same way, the best that you can. Then I would send them to a lab. Then while you're waiting for the lab to run their test and send you results, do your own independent testing. Uh, take the plant that you cut down at day 60 and make it your first smoke of the day. If you normally smoke a joint, if you normally smoke a bong load, if you normally smoke out of the hookah, however you normally do it, take your first smoke of the day of that plant that you cut down at day 60 and then take notes of what happened. Did you get cotton mouth? Did you get a nice buzz? Did you enjoy it? Is it what you're looking for? Then the next day, then you could smoke whatever weed you want after that throughout the day. Then the next day, uh, take that plant you cut down at day 65 and smoke that one the same exact way as you did yesterday for your first smoke of the day. Then let's take notes. Did you get cotton mouth? Did you like the flavor, like the aroma? Did you get the buzz you're looking for? Then compare it to the one you smoked yesterday. Then you can smoke whatever weed you want for the rest of the day. I give you permission. Then the third day, guess what we're going to do? We're going to smoke the sample that went for 70 days, and we're going to compare it on the same criteria as the first two. Then we're going to think about which one did you really enjoy the most. Write it down. Pick one. Write the things that you notice, the pros, the cons, the pluses, the minuses, the similarities, and the differences. Mark all that shit down. Then uh, when the tests come, compare the lab tests to your personal paper notes. Uh, did you agree? Is it your favorite? The one that is the most potent? Is that the one that you chose? The one that's the terpiest? Is that the one that you chose? And then see if those test results line up. Is your favorite plant the one that got you the highest? The one that gave you the favorite buzz? Is that the one that had the highest lab test? Was the one that you said tasted the best? The one that tested with the highest terps? Just play a game and see if you can get the lab test, if you can predict the lab test, or if the lab tests agree with you. I just think that that would be fun. What matters the most is which finished product do you prefer? Do you like the early cut, the middle cut, that late cut? That is the most important part. Or maybe you're growing for a medical need for somebody else. Uh, maybe you're growing for uh, for a profit. Uh, does your medical client or does your, uh, your clientele, do they prefer a certain one? That's what's going to matter the most. Uh, use that lab test for funsies. It sounds like you're testing anyway. And I'm always curious to see lab results. Please do send me those. But the most important part is which one do you like the most? most. Now he does wrap it up with, or is it that I'm growing in organic soil and not using PGRs? No, I don't think that that is a factor here. I think you're a great grower. I think you're going to get similar results in PGRs or in your organic soil or whatever you chose to grow in. I'm sure that you would kill it and get similar results. Uh, don't feel bad that 20% THC was your test result. That's not a low number. That's not a bad number. Uh, that's very common. That's very, uh, that's acceptable in the cannabis industry. And you got that 2.0% CBG, which tells me there could have been possibly more THC if you did let it go longer. So uh, the only way to answer that is honestly to let one go a little bit longer and then test it again and see what type of results you do get. But to make that official, you have to do everything the exact same all over again, or it's not an official uh, science. So I would run, like I said before, run a few plants and then cut some down at some time, some at another, some at another, and then run those. Maybe you could cut uh, one branch off, one branch, one branch. That sounds kind of silly. I don't like that idea, but it, it would be good science. It would work. But uh, I would do three more tests if you can uh, from a 60, a 65, and a 70. And if you want to go crazy, go for a day 75 test 
just for fun. Most importantly, though, smoke them. See what you like. My dude 311, I do thank you once again for the great question. That one got me rambling quite well. I'm going to send you a coupon code for a free pack of Irie Genetics Premium Seeds, and I can't wait to see what you do with them, my friend. All right, we do have another great message here in front of me. This one came from our friend who wants to be called Stax, and the question from Stax goes a little bit like this. It says, yo, this podcast rocks. A lot of good info and has helped me in my breeding journey. Well, you're very welcome. I'm glad to help you out in the breeding journey. Uh, It says, I'm sure you've spoke on this before, but thoughts on selfing. So selfing, that is when you take a female plant and you treat it with a solution and that female plant will make pollen. That pollen is feminized pollen. I will take that pollen and put it on a clone of the exact same plant that will make feminized seeds that are, we'll just say golden goat is a golden goat to golden goat. Since that is the same plant, it pollinated itself. That is now selfing. That is an S1. That is a self feminized plant. That is what selfing means just to catch you guys up. Then he goes on and he says, what about the next generations, the S2, the S3 and so on? That is a very good question. It says, I read on the internet that it's the quickest way to uniformity. Um, sometimes those S2s and S3s, well, let's talk about how we do that and what that is. Uh, the S1 is when you take that original plant and pollinate itself, right? That first seed that comes off, that is S1. If I were to grow out those seeds and find a plant that looked just like the mommy that I'm looking for, just like the original plant that I reversed or the, that I'm working with, if I find that one again, then I cut two clones of that and reverse one and pollinate the other one again and do the process again. Now I'm making S2s. If I repeat that, I'm making S3. Every time I do it, I make another generation with another number. Sometimes in those further S generations, things can be great or they can be really, really wonky. Sometimes you'll breed just weak, slow-growing plants. Sometimes you'll grow some mutated plants. Sometimes you'll bring out some weird recessive traits. But sometimes you do have really good luck and you're able to lock in the exact traits that you were looking for. I have played with S2 and S3 generations and a couple of back crosses and different variations of that. And from my experience, it's less risky to just leave that S1 alone and be happy with the phenotypes that are coming from that than it is to go S2 and risk the mutation and the weird uh, lack of vigor and the weirdness that does come from that. Now, there is more to this question. Let me jump to it. It says, uh, my thought is, if I find the perfect cross in an F1 generation, could I self that to get uniformity or are there problems this way? Now, the F1 generation is not feminized. I'm not sure if you meant F1 generation in there, but we'll talk about a couple of different things here. Let's start with Golden Goat. Uh, You said find the perfect cross. Golden Goat is a nearly perfect cross. I love that plant. It's fun to grow. It's fun to smoke, and it breeds beautifully. So I'm going to use Golden Goat here. Uh, You said, my thought is if I find the perfect cross, which we'll say Golden Goat. um, Golden Goat is an F1, so that fits perfectly into your criteria. It says, could I self that to get uniformity or are there problems this way? No, there are absolutely no problems in selfing that F1. That is a great idea. That is exactly what I do. I do that with the golden goat. I do that with a couple of other things. When you self an F1, a lot of the times what I do find is that I find approximately 50 to 70% of the progeny look just like the original mother plant. So if I take that golden goat, I self it, I make golden goat S1 seeds, at least 50% of those seeds are going to look just like the golden goat that I started with. Now, here's a way that I like to break it down when I'm talking about fem seeds and phenotypes to expect. Most of the time in my experience, and believe me, there are many variables. This is just from my experience and what I have seen. Most of the time, I'm going to find 50% of the phenotypes look just like the plant that I reversed. So if I'm working with golden goat, 50 to 70%, we're going to say 50 for this just to give myself a buffer zone and just for mathematical purposes, uh, usually 50 to 70, but we're going to say 50% of those seeds are going to look just like the golden goat. Now, what we're also going to find is 20% of those seeds are going to look like the mother of golden goat, and 20% of those seeds will look like the dad of the golden goat. Now, we're also going to find about 10% of those seeds just to be complete weirdos. Who knows what those are going to look like? That is just what the genetics do. They could look like grandma. They could look like grandpa. They could be all over the place. But usually, about 50 to 70% of them are going to look just like the mom that we started with, 
We're going to see some of the dad and some of the mom on the, the parents, the mom and the dad. And then sometimes we're going to see some weird phenotypes in there. So that is generally the ratio that I find when I'm working with the, uh, the S1s, which is a feminized version of the F1. Now, I understand that the question was asking about going further generations to lock in that uniformity or the word stability. That's when stable comes in here. But I think by doing the S1 that you're going to lock in as much as you need to. You're going to find enough phenotypes that look just like the original mother plant. If you're doing this for yourself, for preservation, uh, that S1 is perfectly fine. You will find a lot of great phenotypes in there that look just like the mom. If you want to do this for commercial production, if you want to put these seeds out, then you may want to work it further. But honestly, the Golden Goat S1s that I put out, people are finding phenotypes that look just like the original Golden Goat. They get a six pack of seeds and they'll find one that looks just like the original Golden Goat in that pack. So my dude, I hope that was a sufficient answer to your question. I always do love talking about breeding. And since I read your question here on the podcast, that means that you win a gift card for a free pack of Irie Genetics Premium Seeds on irieDirect.com. Check your email by the time this episode comes out. If you don't find the gift card in your email, please do check your spam. Sometimes those gift cards do go to the spam folder. I do not want that to expire before you get the opportunity to use that gift card. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pimps and hoes, friends and foes, smokers, growers, clone cutters, pollen chuckers, all of you beautiful cannabis enthusiasts out there, I do want to thank you once again for listening to another episode of the Grow From Your Heart podcast. Make sure you check out the website at iregenetics.com. There's a link to the Discord server where somebody is hanging out in the Smokers Lounge chat right now, taking dabs, talking about life, sharing grow knowledge with you. Everything you could possibly imagine is at iregenetics.com. There's a link to iregenetics.com where you can get those seeds, anything you could need, iriegenetics.com. I know that was a big mouthful here right at the end of the podcast. If you've listened this far, I've got a gift for you. Make sure you use coupon code LOVE at iriedirect.com. You'll get 10% off. All right, that is all I've got for you for this episode. Ladies and gentlemen, I do want to give a big shout out to my buddy Jay Maestro. And until next time, take a fat dab and give your mom a hug for me. Rasta Jeff, you bad motherfucker. Big up yourself every time, Rasta Jeff. Holy shit, that is loud. Fucking A.